that out. The definition of commitment is to do what you said you were going to do long after the mood you set it in has left you. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my good buddy and huge uh, elite pro nine in our business, uh, Dr. Mark Gordon. He's going to be talking to you about Nerf 2, and I'm glad my part is over. Thanks, Mark. Take it away. Thank you, Stu. I'm going to do a screen share here so that I can bring up some slides if that's okay. Let me know that everybody can see these okay when I pull them up here. Hold on. Okay. Is everybody seeing that? Yep. We're yep. good. All right. Perfect. So what I want to do in 15 minutes is an hour-long science presentation. So I'm going to go super fast here. And if you don't get it all, it's okay because Stu's recording this. You can go back and watch it. So first off, what we're looking to do with Protanum Nerf 2 is to reduce oxidative stress. So what is oxidative stress? Oxidative stress is the disturbance in the balance between the production of reactive oxygen species or free radicals and antioxidant defense systems, okay? So the things that are in red here or orange, because I'm colorblind, I, I can't tell what color those are, those are the bad things. Those are the things that cause damage to your cells. The superoxide anion, the, hydrox the hydrogen peroxide, the hydroxyl radical, and the peroxynitrite. Those are the things that build up uh, when you don't have a good antioxidant defense system and they cause damage to your cells. They lead to cellular aging, um, disease, and ultimately death. And so as you can see on the top, the things that catalyze the reaction to the harmless things, the water and the oxygen, are SOD, catalase, and glutathione. So if you're deficient in those things, you're gonna have a buildup of those toxic free radicals there, the superoxide anion, the hydrogen peroxide, hydroxy radical, and the peroxynitrite. You don't want that. You want the reaction to go over to water and oxygen, and you need to have the SOD, catalase, and glutathione to catalyze those reactions. So we live in a very toxic environment. When we are young, we have a very good ability to fight the free radicals because our own cells produce antioxidant enzymes. These things that actually will neutralize those free radicals, the SOD, the catalase, the glutathione. So if we go back, you can see where those work. And when you have high quantities of those, you don't get the buildup of those toxic uh, free radicals that cause the damage. But as we age, we produce less and less of those protective enzymes. And so the result is we have more of a buildup of those free radicals that start damaging our cells. Now, in addition to that, we live in a very toxic environment, one in which we have lots and lots of other things that increase free radical production, things like smoking, too much alcohol, pesticides that are sprayed on the foods that we eat, inflammation, poor diet, pollution, drugs, radiation. That was a big problem for me because I worked in a cath lab every day of my cardiology practice, standing two feet away from a x-ray tube. Stress, trauma, injury, um, infections, too much and not enough exercise. All of those things increase free radical production, oxidative stress, leading to cellular aging, disease, and death. And if you look at the different organ systems, oxidative stress affects every single one of them. So all of the diseases that you hear about that people get as they get older are linked back directly to oxidative stress. So in the heart, for example, heart attacks, high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, endothelial dysfunction, the brain is very susceptible to oxidative stress causing Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autism, and all sorts of other things. But everything that you don't want to get when you get older is linked back to oxidative stress. And so Mr. Sean Poe, who's on the call, when he does his science presentations, he says oxidative stress is bad. Reducing oxidative stress is good. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here with Pertandem. But let's go back historically a little bit and talk about what we used to think in the past. We used to think it was a good idea to take antioxidants in the form of vitamin E, vitamin C, and beta carotene, and so forth. And so those antioxidants would neutralize free radicals in a one-to-one -one relationship. So one antioxidant molecule neutralizes one free radical, and then the process is over. But what we've come to learn is that's a bad technique or a bad way to try to get rid of free radicals. And the reason why is because there's all of these studies out there now that show that taking high doses of things like vitamin E, vitamin C, beta carotene, not only don't reduce your risk of cancer and heart disease, but in certain cases may actually increase your risk of cancer. And so these are some of the studies that actually showed that. 
And so what we've come to realize is that it's better to get our bodies to make it our own antioxidants. And whoever is drawing on my slide, please stop. I don't know who that is. My guess is Kevin Messerschmidt, if he's on the, on the uh, webinar. Um, but we've come to realize that these direct antioxidants, these things that we take in from the outside, the vitamin E, vitamin C, beta carotene, and so forth, are not as effective at the, as the indirect antioxidants, those antioxidants that our cells actually make, the SOD, the catalase, the glutathione, and all of those other protective enzymes. So thus enters NERF2. NERF2 is a messenger protein that activates genes and it's responsible for redox balancing and it's a master regulator. So here's how the NERF2 pathway works. So when something acts on a cell that is a NERF2 activator, it acts on this one protein called KEEP1. KEEP1 is a holding protein and what that does is it binds NERF2 and it holds it in the cytoplasm of the cell attached to the inside of the cell membrane by this protein called actin. And so when the NERF2 activator acts on that cell, what happens is the NERF2 gets released from KEEP1, it then goes into the nucleus that attaches to a segment of DNA called the antioxidant response element, the ARE, and then it affects gene expression downstream on that strand of DNA. So it turns up the expression of the good stuff and it turns down the expression of the bad stuff. And so what it does essentially is it increases the production of these antioxidant enzymes you know, catalase glutathione, superoxide dismutase, but hundreds of others as well. There's lots and lots of other functions of NERF2 that we'll touch on in this talk because we only have limited time. But it also turns down through another messenger called NF-kappa B, it turns down the bad stuff. It turns down the pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrotic proteins. So you get the best of both worlds. More of the good, less of the bad, and we now have a clinical study with Portantinum the first study that showed a 40% reduction in oxidative stress after 30 days uh, on average. And there's no other product on the market that can do that. So one of the interesting things about NERF2 is there's different places where you can actually activate the pathway. So for example, if we go back to this slide, you can increase the release of NERF2 from KEEP1. You can increase the entrance of NERF2 from the cytoplasm into the nucleus you can increase the attachment of NERF2 to the antioxidant response element, and you can reduce the degradation or the breakdown of the NERF2 protein. So all of those things would in essence do the same thing, increase the activity of NERF2. And so if we look at this slide, look at, at all the different pathways through which you can activate NERF2, that's very likely why protanum has such a potent effect at activating NERF2. You know, as you guys all know, there's five ingredients, green tea, turmeric, milk, thistle, ashwagandha, and bacopa. And they all work synergistically to improve or enhance the NERF2 activity. And when I spoke to Dr. McCord about this, he told me it's probably because each one of those things are individually activating NERF2 at a different point in that pathway. And so the sum total of that is much greater than the sum of the parts. And that's the synergistic effect. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other thing that's important about NERF2 is to understand that physiologically, NERF2 is released in a pulsatile fashion. It's not turned on all the time. It's not turned off all the time. Both of those situations are bad, and you do not want that to happen. You want it to be released in a pulsatile fashion because that's what's physiologic. So a couple of times a day, having NERF2 turned on is a good thing. Having it turned on all the time is a bad thing. Now, if we go back and we look at the publications that have uh, happened on NERF2 and PubMed, you can see that, you know, when it was first discovered in the mid-90s, there were hardly any studies, but now by the end of 2014, there have been over 5,000 published peer-reviewed studies on NERF2. So yes, it is a big, big deal. And there's more and more people that are getting on board with this whole NERF2 technology and recognizing that this is the wave of the future. I'm gonna skip through a lot of these slides because these are the ones that I do for my in-depth science talk, and we just don't have time to cover them all today. This is a list of some of the companies and universities that currently have synthetic NERF2 activating compounds that are, they're studying uh, in various diseases, everything associated with oxidative stress. So there's a big push out there in the pharmaceutical world to get the next NERF2 activator drug out there. 
But when you look at the comparisons between protanum and the synthetic NERF2 activators that are, have been studied so far, protanum is actually more potent as a NERF2 activator than even the synthetic stuff, which is unusual, but it has to do with the fact that we have that synergistic effect of the five ingredients together. Now, because protanum is a supplement and not a drug, we can't make any comments that it cures, treats, or prevents anything. But if you look at the studies that have been done on protanum, and there have now been 23 published peer-reviewed studies, the last one came out last week, there's not another supplement on the market that I'm aware of that has that kind of scientific validation like what we have. So here's what's in protanum, bacopa, silimerum, which is milk, milk thistle, EGCG, which is green tea, uh, with any, uh, which is um, the bacopa and curcumin, which is the turmeric. Here's what's important. If you look at the individual ingredients, they do very, very little by themselves to activate this NERF2 pathway. But when you put the five together, there was an 18-fold increase or 1,800% increase in the activation of these antioxidant genes. And that's that synergistic effect that we've been talking about. And that's what's so important. This was the first study that was done on protanum that showed the 40% reduction in oxidative stress in 30 days. It showed that superoxide dismutase increased 34%, catalase increased 54%. There's unpublished data to show that glutathione increases 300%. But the, the bottom line is there was a 40% reduction across the board in oxidative stress regardless of your age, and that was highly statistically significant. And that's what led to the patents on Pertanda. So we're gonna whip through some of these. So, this is an article that came out two years ago. This is a great article to uh, send people with scientific backgrounds to. It's a nice review of NERF2 and all of the diseases that have been studied with regard to NERF2. And the basic theme of the research was that just about every disease that they looked at improved when they activated NERF2. And so there's lots of different things that they looked at that can activate NERF2. This is a partial list of some of those things. Um, other healthcare factors that can increase uh, NERF2 activity include moderate exercise, certain types of diets, and so forth. Now, in looking at the studies that they did, um, lots of different diseases that have been helped, sepsis, autoimmune disease, inflammatory bowel disease, HIV, AIDS, lots of neurological conditions, including epilepsy, Lou Gehrig's disease, Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease. Over 500 genes are activated or turned on with NERF2. Others, the bad ones, are turned down through that NF kappa B that I talked about. Lots of other proteins. You know, we talk about SOD catalase and glutathione, but there's hundreds of other proteins that are beneficial that are turned on with NERF2. Uh, I'm just going to whip through these because I want to get to a couple of things at the end. Detoxification is a big thing. Glutathione has increased 300% with pertanum. Two phases of detoxification. If phase one works and phase two doesn't, you're going to be very sick. You got to turn on that phase two, and you do so by increasing glutathione production, which NERF2 activation does. Lots of anti inflammatory effects of uh, NERF2, anti fibrotic effects as well. Cellular integrity. Two of the studies on protanum had to do with this P53 tumor suppressor transcription factor. Uh, look at the studies from Louisiana State University on melanoma skin cancer, and you can see what those showed, but they were very beneficial. Longevity. Oregon State University did lots of studies on longevity, and basically what they found is that those animals that had the highest levels of NERF2 lived the longest and had the least amount of disease as they aged. So it's important for longevity. Neurodegeneration. These are some of the diseases where NERF2 activation has been found to be beneficial. So it led to a lot of uh, editorial articles in the medical literature about, you know, is this NERF2 thing a cellular protection pathway that we need to be paying attention to? And the answer to that is yes. It's been found to be beneficial in both ischemic and hemorrhagic strokes. Um, the Michael J. Fox Foundation is doing a study on NERF2 activation for treatment of Parkinson's disease. Um, Protanum has been looked at with regard to the genes associated with Alzheimer's disease, and there's actually 66 genes associated with Alzheimer's. And what they found is that Protanum had a positive effect on 43 or 65% of the 66 genes that are associated with Alzheimer's disease. Now, we can't say it's a cure treatment or prevention for Alzheimer's, but it's interesting that it has a positive effect 
on 65% of the genes associated with Alzheimer's. Multiple sclerosis, dimethylfumarate or uh, tecfidera has been found to be beneficial for the treatment of multiple sclerosis. It is a NERF2 activator. This was a study published in the New England Journal of Medicine showing how it reduced re recurrence rates of uh, MS by 50%, another confirming study of 44% reduction. So lots of studies on the effect of NERF2 in the brain. Now, this is a very important study. Let me go back here. This was a comparison of pertanum to bardoxolone in box B, um, dimethylfumarate in box C, which is tecfidera, and sulforaphane, which is the active ingredient in broccoli, which is in box D. Two important things to note from this. One is pertanum was twice as potent as the synthetic drugs at activating NERF2, and it was six to seven times as potent as sulforaphane, which is often touted as the way to activate NERF2 in the kind of natural treatment world because it comes from broccoli, but pertanum is actually six to seven times more potent. The other thing to notice is that there's a kind of a bell-shaped effect with each one of these ingredients or each one of these NERF2 activators. So you don't get more effect by going to a higher dose. In fact, you get less of an effect. So there's a sweet spot in the dosing of each of these products. And going to a higher dose won't get you to the point, won't get you to the same level of NERF2 activation that Pertanum has. So you might think the Tech Federa people maybe just underdosed. Well, that's not the case. Going to higher doses, they're never going to get to the same NERF2 activation level as Pertanum. This was a study in, from uh, the Netherlands from an international MS society meeting. And this is their conclusions. Our findings indicate that several NERF2 activators are able to significantly increase antioxidant enzyme production. Interestingly, pertanum, a dietary supplement consisting of herbal ingredients, was the most potent inducer and therefore maybe the most suited as a therapeutic strategy. Now, this study just came out last September. And this was, uh, as you can see from the authors on this, Dr. McCord and Dr. Jack Van Horsen, who works for Biogenetic, they teamed up on this. They didn't look at, at uh, Tecfidera, they looked at a similar compound called monomethylfumarate instead of dimethylfumarate, but they found some very interesting results. So the tallest bars there are pertanum, and the results are very good. So if you look at the other things that they looked at, sulforaphane, monomethylfumarate, and then the controls, Protanum was significantly better in antioxidant protein expression. It increased glutathione levels significantly more. It promoted oligodendrocyte survival, which is a type of nerve cell, better than anything else. And so their conclusions were that protanum is probably the best suited at protecting those nerve cells. But again, this is a supplement. We can't make any health claims. Uh, this was a study from the National Institute on Aging looking at nutritional supplements and what effect they might have on extending lifespan. So here, here are the agents that they found that extended lifespan. 17-alpha estradiol. So think about that. If you're male, do you really want to take estrogen? I don't. Metformin and rapamycin, which is, which is a diabetes drug and an immunosuppressive drug. I'm not going to take those every day. Um, Precos, which is another diabetes drug, I'm not going to take that because I don't have diabetes, and Protanum. Protanum was the only supplement that was found to lengthen lifespan. And they looked at fish oil, resveratrol, curcumin, green tea, and so forth. But of all of the supplements, Protanum was the only one that they found that extended lifespan. It wasn't, it wasn't huge, but it was statistically significant. We talked about neurodegenerative uh, diseases and so forth. Lots of studies going on in those. Altitude sickness, protanum has been found to be beneficial through that nerve to activation. Um, and so just to kind of summarize that Washington State article, these are the, the diseases in which it was found that activating nerve 2 may be helpful. Cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative diseases, cancer prevention, chronic kidney disease, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, et cetera, liver disease, lung disease, autoimmune disease, inflammatory bowel disease, HIV, AIDS, MS, epilepsy. That's a pretty long list. Cardiovascular disease, lots of studies going on in cardiovascular disease. This is looking at atherosclerosis and the genes associated with atherosclerosis. Protanum had a positive effect on 16 of the 19 genes associated with atherosclerosis. 
Riata Pharmaceuticals has a drug called Bardoxlon. It is a Nrf2 activated. They're studying pulmonary hypertension. Interestingly, Protanum actually beat them to the punch because Protanum has studies on pulmonary hypertension. And this particular study in circulation, which is the Journal of the American Heart Association, which was my epiphany moment, was the one that showed that despite the fact that they created pulmonary hypertension in these animals, they didn't develop right heart failure, which would otherwise have been expected. So pertandem preserved the function of the right heart when it should have started to dilate and fail, and it didn't do that. And they talk about the mechanisms through which that may happen. But because of time, we're not going to go through all of that. But I would encourage you guys, if you're able to, to get on one of my uh, in-depth science seminars when I can go through this in much, much more detail. Here was a great study, looked at how T-bars is the best marker for uh, future cardiovascular events. It's better than looking at CRP. It's better than looking at LDL or total cholesterol or any other parameter. They found that the T-bar test was a better predictor of future cardiovascular events. So why aren't we looking at that? I don't know. We should be. Um, cancer prevention. Um, the genes associated with colon cancer, 25 of the 28 genes are turned in the opposite direction with protandum. Again, this is not a treatment, cure, or prevention for any type of disease. This was the skin cancer study from uh, Louisiana State University, a very positive effect. They actually did two studies. The Mayo Clinic, a gentleman from there did a study on ovarian cancer and showed that protandum um, shows promising effects in, in potentially in ovarian cancer. He's doing some more studies right now looking at that. Um, from the University of uh, Toronto or Montreal, I can't remember, showed that protanum had a protective effect on the degradation of cartilage in osteoarthritis. So, you know, for people to say that this protanum is snake oil and doesn't do anything, it just drives me bananas because we have now 23 peer-reviewed scientific studies, much to the contrary of the naysayers. So I would encourage you guys, if you haven't had a chance to look at all the scientific studies that are available on protanum and are available on NERF2, to go and look at that. And I'll leave you with this. This was from a uh, instructor in my anti-aging fellowship. And this gentleman was the chief science officer of a company that sells a sulforaphane nerf to activator product. Remember I told you sulforaphane is one sixth to one seventh as potent as pertandem. He stated this, nerf 2 is a revolution in science and is the most important anti-aging pathway in the, in the human body. If you understand what NERF2 is and how potent it is and the big effect that it has on disease prevention, longevity, and so forth, why on earth is not everybody jumping on board and wanting to get involved with this? So I'm gonna leave it with that, Stu. Um, let me just add with, end with this one statement from the Washington State article. NERF2 may well become the most extraordinary therapeutic and most extraordinary preventive breakthrough in the history of medicine. Handing it back over to you, Stu. Thank you so much.